Hollywood is in a very rough place. Companies are losing billions of dollars. You've got the individuals working within the industry who are being laid off in mass. And now we have a Kung Fu Panda 4 co-director saying Hollywood executives totally see the influence and impact anime has had on the world, but still don't care. I have a few things to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, follow me on social media, and consider supporting through Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Now, we have been saying for years at this point that Hollywood is doing something wrong and that they are not listening to their consumers, they are not listening to our feedback and our criticism, and this is why so many people have given up on Western entertainment and gone to supporting anime, manga, whether it's Japanese entertainment or even Korean entertainment. Because, you know, with things like anime, you can get basically any kind of genre or story you want. Fantasy, horror, action, dating, you know, you've got found family, evil to good, wholesome. I mean, that is a major reason why people have gone to supporting things like Japanese content because of the variety. Plus, in the West, we are battling politics being shoved into entertainment and creators absolutely hating our guts and you've got shows and movies from places like Korea that are massively popular, and we're even seeing this push for Korean video games. You've got Vindictus, Defying Fate, The First Descendant. You've also got, of course, most notably, Stellar Blade, and this is why we have seen so many people giving up on Western entertainment, but it says in what may go down as perhaps one of the most baffling revelations to ever come out of, you know, modern animation history, the Kung Fu Panda 4 co-director. Stephanie Ma Stein has alleged that while Hollywood execs are fully aware of the influence and impact that anime has had across the globe, they still refuse to take any lessons from the medium due to their own bizarre belief that audiences don't want these kind of stories and it every single turn we have proven them wrong. That is why, you know, again, so many people are turning towards these other industries, these other regions, and what they're creating, that this is why, you know, Japanese manga is more popular than American comics in the West. These are the stories that we want, and there is such a vast array that you can consume. It's why we've given up on Hollywood, because the people in the industry are not listening to our feedback, and that is one of the worst things you can do, is make your consumers, the very people you need to purchase and you know, consume your product to make them feel like they are not important and like they are not being listened to. And this just proves yet again how awful these people are. Asked by a fan on her opinion on more serious tones and scenes for animated movies, like the one scene from Puss in Boots where the hero experiences a panic attack after realizing that he's used up eight of his nine lives, and she said, you know, she loves it, especially since so many audience these days have grown up on more mature stories everywhere. And then turning to broach the topic of the popular Japanese medium, the director continued, I think in most bookstores, for example, the anime and manga section takes up a majority of floor space. But here's the catch, she then details, a lot of the people in charge of the finances of making a movie think that audiences don't want these kind of stories. I'm not sure why, she said, every time I've talked to an executive, they told me that yes, they totally see the influence and impact anime has had on the world, but no, we won't do that. Now, of course, this is just pathetic that there are still so many people in the industry who won't try to be better or to make better content, and I honestly don't see that changing anytime soon. Even the co-director on a new movie like Kung Fu Panda 4 is admitting this, but the executives, the people who are greenlighting these projects, they think that audiences want the acolytes or the American society racial satires, but we have proven them time and time again that that just isn't the case. But another reason I think that this has happened um, is because Hollywood's seen so many failures with Japanese products, specifically adaptations like Dragon Ball Evolution and Death Note. We have seen some wins like with Netflix's One Piece adaptation 
foundation but in my opinion a really big reason that was successful was because Oda was a part of it and bringing the original creator in is the best way to do it and I know people generally enjoyed Avatar but that one wasn't a slam dunk quite like One Piece but I think a reason why they're acknowledging but not accepting or trying to change when it comes to Japanese entertainment and influence is because they have tried time and time and time again to adapt Japanese products and, um, of course, IPs, and it just hasn't quite worked out the way that they anticipate. So they are really looking at this, you know, not as broadly as they could, um, in my opinion. I think that they are looking at it just going, oh yeah, people like this type of animation, people like, you know, these designs, people like these characters, but they're not looking at the deeper meaning. They're not looking at, we love these characters because they are, you know, characters with so much depth. These worlds are so flushed out, and sometimes they are just so wacky and silly and goofy that it ends up coming together and creating a really good story when you've got, you know, a very serious, strong lead character who's in this very, you know, like, goofy world. And um, that's a big reason why things like One Piece work so well. And I just don't think that they are willing to change and adapt, and that will be their ultimate downfall. And honestly, that's why the industry has been failing for so many years at this point, because they are trying time and time and time again with the same things. We've seen so many remakes, so many reboots, and while you can get away with making some of those when that is all you are pumping out it just shows that you are hiring people who are not good at their jobs and that Hollywood and the industry is filled with people who just should not be in the positions that they have we need to be hiring people that have creative bones in their bodies who are willing to take risks and also companies who are willing to fund those risks and that just isn't happening a lot right now now, of course, again, I'm sure a lot of us would love to see Hollywood be magically turned around and for 9 out of 10 projects to be good. Of course, you're always going to have some duds, but with the direction they've been headed in with the constant reboots and remakes and simply hiring activists over creatively inclined individuals, that is just not going to happen. And then you've got the layer of the executives of the Bob Igers greenlighting these types of projects because they're so worried and so focused on pushing the the message that they're not actually worried anymore about creating good content and that just isn't going to sell and as consumers are becoming more educated on things like corporate DEI trends less and less of these projects are getting viewership and less and less of these projects are being considered successes we have seen them burn billions of dollars over the past few years trying to constantly push these types of things like the acolytes and the American society for magical negroes onto consumers and it's just not working I don't know if there's an easy way to save Hollywood at this point. They would have to completely gut these companies. The executives would have to go. We would have to see a major shift, and I just don't necessarily see that happening. But of course, it is really sad to hear um, from someone in the industry that Hollywood executives see the impact and influence anime has had on the world, but still don't think audiences like these kinds of stories when we have tried to t tell them time and time again that we actually do. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.